Pursuit of Freedom. This is build day 51. After being off uh, Sunday, a regular day off, and then Monday was the voting day, everybody was off. Because it takes like three or four, maybe five hours to get through the line to vote here. So it's a, it's a lot. I think there's only like one area, like at the Barangay Hall, where you can vote in each like little enclave. So, so it's looking nice out there. And uh, like I was saying earlier, the, uh, some of the labor part is uh, winding down as far as the digging. So the builder cut it from 13 down to 10, back down to 10. So that will go back up to uh, when they start to uh, pour the path. So, um, right now it's just going to be 10. So three laborers got cut, so. Uh, they're just gonna get a rest period, you know? They'll probably, they'll come back during this, the pad pour, I'm sure. And uh, unless, of course, they get another job or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> It's good to be back working on the job site. So, uh, believe it or not, you know, I'm, I I got tired of watering that concrete. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, uh, um, I did, I got a rookie mistake. You know, I didn't even bring my um uh, backpack with my water and stuff in it because my routine got moved around. So I didn't do it. I think I'll go get it though and uh, get some water and uh, go back to digging over here like I was. Gonna finish digging this and filling up this area over here. Yeah, I got a lot to, a lot to still dig here. So. Wow, the bamboo is talking to me. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll uh, see you back. Uh, later on, probably this afternoon. This property right here is Nirvanaville in Zaragoza, Bugasong, Antique, Western Visayas, oh, Panay Island, Western Visayas, Philippines. That's the my whole address. <laughs> that pinpoints me right there. Nirvanaville, Bugasong. Now, Nirvanaville, Zaragoza, Bugasong, Antique, Panay Island, Western Visayas, Philippines. Because Western Visayas, you know, I was stating that before Panay Island, but Panay Island is just one island in Western Visayas. So, got to name that island first, and then Western Visayas is like a region. So, you know, there's a bunch of islands. So, but Western Visayas is a bunch of islands, too, so... All right, I'll see you back when I, I gotta go get some water cause I'm sweating right now, bam. Oh yeah, they pulled a fish net. Let's see what kind of fish they're gonna get right here. Oh, uh, they took a rowboat and they ride all around there and they ride down to see the, the other end of the net is right down there. They're pulling one side. It's like a half a moon out there. They went out there pretty deep. And now they <laughs> drag it back in. Oh, it's drowning! They drag it back in now. <laughs> so we'll see what kind of fish come up. Oh, right there. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Swordfish? A baby swordfish. Oh, there's another one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's very pretty fish. Oh, yeah, you look nice.
doing like the sunshine, I know it. They got a couple swordfish. Oh, uh, young ones. So, you know, they would just keep doing it until they get enough for everybody. Right. So, sometimes you pull in the net and it's too much to pull. Sometimes it's just two or three. That's why they call it fishing and not grocery shopping. <laughs> So, this is what I'm doing on build day 51. Taking, I already got some from here. You can see where I've been digging. And uh, it's rock mixed with uh, soil instead of sand. So, uh, down there where it's the lowest by the fence, the uh, front fence. Look how high that mound goes. I don't know if you can tell, but that's way up there. It's hard to just get the perspective of it because I'd say that that hill down there is that's um, from ground zero. That's probably four and a half feet at the peak down there. And that rock beyond it, beyond behind that banana tree, that rock piled up back there is five feet above ground zero. Ground zero being the natural grade of the ground. So that's five feet at the rock, four and a half at that hill, and probably two feet down here on this little hill. So I started here. I don't want to dig over there where they got the bamboo uh, holding the scaffolding. So I'm going to stay away from that. I'm just going to dig a, a pet, you know, see where the edge of this bamboo is right there. I'm going to go over to the fence and make a path right down the side of this. Except for that rock, he wants to use that rock for to go under the bamboo to keep it stable when they make more of it up there. So I'm putting it in here. You know, I got a thing to break up the rock there and a shovel. And I'm going to dig right there all the way down to that rock way down there. <laughs> Not today. It's going to take, I don't know, might take me a week or two. Thinking about more like the two. But anyway, I come down this way right here and uh, cut across here because it's easy. And then I cut this way, trying to stay out of the deep sand because it's hard to push into the deep sand that a wheelbarrow is. And then it kind of bogs me down in this sand right here a little bit, going down. And then I pretty much do the turn right here and uh, I get bogged down in that sand down there. But you see what I'm doing. This is the lowest part of the yard where the erosion was the worst. And uh, this is all sand that I dug and put over, you know, I put it on the other side of the fence to fill up. That's uh, salty sand. And uh, it's been washed by rains too since. And now that this wall's here, it's gonna, it'll get less and less. That's why it gets filtered by the rain and the rain soaks through it, it'll wash the sand. So. This is rock mixed with, not sand, but soil. And that's dry, cause that's the first one I did. And you see there the soil. It's kind of like clay, like soil, but you know, I would get it up within like, I don't know, say 18 inches from that drain. And then I will get pure topsoil to put on top. So if uh, at least my base will be nice and stable and be able to drain if need be you know because i don't know how wild the rainy seasons get around here i'm sure a lot of water goes on the ground during a typhoon so anyway that's what i'm doing and you know you see how low that is up to that drain so i only want 12 to really probably about 15 inches of topsoil below right up to the bottom of that drain, down 15 inches or 16. I said 18, but I think I think a foot of pure topsoil is enough to grow, you know, like tomatoes and watermelon and stuff. Not only that, the roots can still go down in that soil because that's not pure rock. 
it could still go down in that soil. This is the tropics, you know, there's stuff growing out here in the pure salt sand. You see that and got that talisot tree, which is just like, uh, it's just like that tree. It's got pretty big leaves. It's a good shade tree. And that's a, that's one right beside it too. Big one right beside it. Well, teenager or something. And then that one's growing because I planted that one. That's how I'm helping. I'm not going to get involved in the construction unless they need me, unless they ask me, hey, we need a hand and then I'll help them. But I'm going to leave them to their own devices and then I'm just going to work on the landscaping like I've been doing. Because it's too much to wait till the end. This place would be really tore up. Anyway, there's a big, uh, underneath this right here, you can see that there's a big tree trunk right there. See it? Anyway, I can't let that just stay there. And, you know, it's from a tree that they cut down and just, I got to dig that up because, you know, it's just going to cause a, once it uh, starts, um, what I'm trying to, you know, it's starting to rot and get reduced. It's going to just put, if I landscape, it's just going to put a big hole in the ground where where that tree was and then it rotted and just decomposed. Decomposed is what I was trying to think of. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. Helping out the best I can. And uh, working on my own. As you can, as see, you can see from this angle, this side is not quite as low as that. See how up to that hole is farther than up to this hole. On, on the corner is the worst, so. That's where I'm gonna work at. And that's where I'm gonna build up the, uh, the most. I try to get it level so that there's a steady 16 inches across there, let's say, for topsoil, which I'm gonna buy later if I have money left. <laughs> Back to work, Rodney Williams. They are working on the form for this. Uh, span right here so that they can pour concrete inside that wood and make the beam. So he's sawing. He is bending steel over there, right around this. And they are forming the wood and tying support for it. So that's enough filming right there. And Jesus is. Uh, Jesus is tying steel together so that, uh, you know, all the ties on the steel, like you see right there, keeps it formed together. And also, they're bagging rocks over there and sand. I saw them bagging some sand earlier. And so, that's what's going on. And they're going to... I saw them forming an extension. I think they're bagging that so that they can uh, make these two extensions right here. They were working on this extension uh, earlier. You know, it's going to make the, uh, see like this one is short. This one has not been extended. So up to the beam. So it will go be extended all the way up to the beam like that form is. And they will pour that concrete later on those two. They pour the concrete. They mix they mix the cement and they pour the concrete normally in the late afternoon or something like that. So that's it. I'm gonna get to work. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. Bill Day, I'm pretty sure it's Bill Day 51, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I think it is because yeah, it was Bill Day half a century and then uh, had a day off on Sunday and then voting day yesterday and this is Tuesday, so it's got to be 51. There'll be no voiceover this time. So. Hey, uh, all right, let me get to digging. Peace out.
That's how I break it up so I can get a shovel full. Yep. Yep, that's how I do it. Kind of hard to shovel with one hand, but <laughs> I'll give it a shot. rocky soil but that's not sand so counting on you know that top layer of 16 inches of topsoil will be on top of that if a root does happen to get through the uh, 16 inches I think it, it could find its way through the rock and that'll be real soil there not salty sand that's my theory you know, everybody's got a theory, like my uh, old friend Hal used to say, Hal Lee. Everybody's got a theory. <laughs> Peace suit to you, Hal. Okay, first thing being poured. That's the main man standing up there, pouring into the beam. That's his lieutenant on the ladder. And. Another lieutenant is over there and far over there with these. They're not working on the floor. They're working independent on the back side over there, tying. See if you can barely to the right of that column up high. The red shirt and uh, striped with blue shirt back right there. So, this is the first beam that goes from. This column right here to the back corner. Back there where that uh, purple and yellow scarf is right there. So, these three are, are carrying the concrete. And then JoJo is taking care of the water. And Marvin A is scooping concrete into the and I'm glad to see that they're getting a the vibrator right now and vibrate the beam. Team. They're doing great. I'm gonna leave them alone now because I like to show the process and the result some, but I don't like to film them all the time because they don't like. I don't think they like it. I didn't talk to them about it, but nobody said film me. <laughs> film me, film me. <laughs> so there you go. I'm not gonna disrespect them by showing them all the time. I will show them in case they do like it. I'll show them a little bit, but I ain't going to beam on them because it matters that they're paying attention to the, uh, the job they're doing because that's a beam. That's going to be the beam where the car is, car is going to, no, not that front part, but the back part of it, the car is going to be sitting down there. Not where he's standing now, but on the other end of the uh, beam. The path. This is the path I've been taking the dirt. And this is another view. See right down these columns at the end up top is uh, the foreman and his lieutenant, one of them. And these are the guys helping down here. And another lieutenant is over there in the red working with Jesus. Oh, and now uh, tying the steel. I'm just messing around, digging this dirt. I made a pretty good progress though from here. This wood, a little bit behind us, right where I'm standing. 
the uh, dog, the, the hill all the way down to there. You can't really get a good perspective of how much that is. Look, look, that's that. Look beyond that. The hill just keeps rising. It's, uh, it's a lot of dirt. And then that goes, the hill goes over, and spills over past those banana trees. So, the concrete mixer continues to make money, save money. In a couple more weeks, it may have paid for itself already. Take it, here's the view. Mr. Bracing. For the beam. Because you know there's got to be a lot of weight. <laughs> it's the size of this, but horizontal. balcony coming off the master from see the vertical steel that corner out to here balcony of the master bedroom right here master bedroom goes over this beam could be a sliding glass door there coming out to the balcony with blue one-way glass. <laughs> Master bathroom. Right next to that's Rain's bathroom and then Rain's bedroom down there. So, that's how it rolls. So that's the first beam. That's where the car is going to be at. Uh, the car is going to pull right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, way up. So EI brought the what they were missing last time, but they're still missing one thing. The That's four to three reducer. On this back road. See it's a back road, alright, it's a country. Got I hear some cicadas somewhere. Cicadas are worldwide. Here's the three ladies. Five twelve Farm Cafe. That's where we're at. Five twelve Farm Cafe. They got good mozzarella cheese on their pizza. I've ate it before. <laughs> it's okay. I got above you. Farm 